Hi. So a few weeks ago, I uploaded a couple of videos to YouTube about a genetic disorder that I have called Coleman Syndrome, and a very surprising thing happened with these videos. For some reason, people were watching them, and they were enjoying the videos, and then these videos made them want to know more about Coleman Syndrome, and so they started asking me questions through emails and comments. It turns out there's not a lot of content, surprise, surprise, on YouTube or the internet in general about Kalman Syndrome. So since I sounded like I know a lot about Kalman Syndrome, and because I have been dealing with it for the past 10 years of my life, people wanted to know more about my story and the progress and the treatment that I got for it. So where I went a little vague on my story is when I got diagnosed with Kalman Syndrome. And as soon as that happened, my doctor immediately suggested I start synthetic hormonal therapy through intramuscular injection. Basically, that meant that every two weeks I went to the doctor's office and I got a shot full of testosterone. And in order to not shock my system, they started me on a low dosage. <laughs> Funny story. So close your ears if you're faint of the heart. But my doctor told me this story on the first day I got my injections. So we heard about this patient who got diagnosed with Kalman Syndrome and his doctor immediately started him on injections as well. But instead of on a low dosage, they immediately ramped his body full of testosterone. Turns out that's not such a good idea because the guy apparently went on vacation and while on vacation, well, he got an erection. And that erection lasted for 48 hours. And I know most people don't know this, but if you have an erection for more than a few hours, bad things happen. That's why you see disclaimers on things like Viagra. So needless to say, I was all for the low dosage after hearing that story. Once I started getting injections, which was with a medicine called Depotestosterone, they started me on low dosage and slowly increased it from 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams and so forth and so on. After being on injections for about a year, I asked my doctor if there were other routes we could take that didn't involve me having to come into the doctor's office every two weeks and I didn't have to get a shot all the time. Cause let's face it, who really likes needles? So that's when I started experimenting with other forms of synthetic hormones. The first one I tried were patches called Androderm, and I used to put those on my arms or my lower back or also on other areas. Those didn't work out for two reasons. The glue on them was itchy and it left a stain on my body because the patches basically were on me all the time. And also the levels of my testosterone just weren't high enough to actually keep using them. So the second form I tried were gel packs called Androgel. These were a lot easier to apply, but the problem still persisted of me not having a testosterone levels that were high enough with them. I mean, basically at one point I was taking a bath with these things and it still wasn't doing the job, so we stopped. <laughs> Funny story, one of my friends thought it'd be really cool if I let him use one of my gel packets once just to see what would happen. I think he thought that they would push his testosterone levels up so high that he'd turn into like a werewolf or something. He didn't. After the gel packets failed, I went right back into injections, but this time I started doing it at home, which was kind of nice. It was much more convenient and a lot easier to maintain, and so I've been doing that since I was about 20 years old. I hope that gives you a little more insight into my KS story, and as always, if you have any other questions or comments about it, please leave them down below or send me a message. And that's all I have to say about that.